Good morning everyone and welcome to Life On Board Amy Jo. As you can see we've moved from yesterday because I needed to get some shopping. Didn't really want to move because it was absolutely pouring with rain <laughs> and Steve doesn't like moving yeah. in the rain. I'm a fair weather cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> but we did nevertheless and it was a lovely little village in um, Stockton Heath. Lovely walk. We took the dog for a walk down to the ship canal in the afternoon. Still a bit drizzly, but we didn't take many photos because of the weather. <laughs> yes, indeed. But as you can see from behind us with that nice blue sky, it's absolutely cracking morning this morning. Sun shining. The breeze is a little bit on the chilly side, but we love it like that because it's nice and fresh. So today's cruise, we're going to uh, carry on towards Liverpool and we're heading today through Lim and we're going to end up in the Dunhams. That sounds painful, doesn't it? Uh, we're, going be, <laughs> we're going to be mooring up near Dunham Massey for the night. Um, we're still well ahead of schedule. As I say, we're not due into Liverpool till the end of the month, but we are now on the Bridgewater Canal and there is a mutual agreement between CNRT and the Bridgewater Canal Company, Pillports, that we can only be on here for seven days. So we've got to measure our time on the Bridgewater. Once we get through Lee, uh, then we'll be back on the Lee's Liverpool Canal and we can uh, rest easy. But for now, we're going to keep cruising. So, like I said last time, grab a cup of tea, get yourself comfy and join us on today's cruise. That's it, we're now ready to hook off. More rounds are off, just waiting for the bow to swing out. Into gear, tick over away and we're off. Just look at that. What a view, eh? What a view. thing that's quite noticeable about the uh, Bridgewater Canal it is quite wide um, compared to some of the canals that uh, CNRT own this is positively wide I think it's one of the widest canals I've been on yet uh, clearly it was designed for wide beam uh, boats and uh, it's obviously well maintained too towpaths are in good order and the banks although concrete you can get into them and more up. So quite liking the bridge walker so far. And here's our first wide beam that we've seen since we've been on the bridge water. So as I said it's designed for wide beams and this is a lovely looking boat. Basically for those that uh, aren't boaters a wide beam as I explained in one of my earlier vlogs is no different to a narrow boat but it's twice as wide. about to go under the busy M6 northbound. Not looking too bad this morning, but then it is Sunday. Morning. coming into the outskirts of Lim now. This is uh, right out on the edge of the village. Uh, lovely places, but as you can probably hear in the background, that M6 is quite noisy. So uh, 
they might look nice places but they've got to put up with that motorway noise all day and sadly the first casualty we've seen on the canals so far such a shame somebody must own it probably not even aware how clean the bridge water's been and here's the reason this is their uh, rubbish collecting boat and clearly they've been collecting a fair amount of rubbish out of the canal so it's good to know that they are working to keep the canal clear Of course, one thing Lim's famous for is this lovely cottage. It's owned by Matthew Corbett of City and Sweet fame. Unfortunately, Matthew contracted the COVID-19 disease and uh, as a result, his health is suffering. So he's selling the property and moving down to the south coast to be with his family. He's pulling it from one side to the other, I think. Need a hand there? Yeah. You sure? Positive. <laughs> You're just pulling it from one side to the other? So, um, where that space is right down there. It's an old working boat that's obviously been converted and uh, he's just poling it onto its mooring. We did offer to give him a tow, uh, which he gracefully declined, but uh, I think he's just enjoying poling the boat to be honest. Lots of new shells here waiting to be fitted out. We find a few white beams up on the hard here. We're now passing over Bolling Aqueduct. As aqueducts go, it's nothing special. There used to be some lovely views here, but now the trees have grown. But in 1971, the aqueduct collapsed and it closed the canal for two years. And uh, the reason it took so long to repair because there was a massive, massive debate going on about who was going to foot the 250,000 bill to rebuild it but it did eventually get redone and uh, here it is today I mentioned earlier that uh, aqueducts on the Bridgewater are called underbridges. And here's one example. This is Bolling Underbridge. As you can see, 
the road goes under the bridge, so under bridge makes sense. We've just pulled up on a lovely little sunny spot, just short of Dunham Town, and it's a, a nice bit of moor in here. There's a bit on the busy side, but we've just sent Chris and Smudge off to do a recce on the visitors' moorings on Dunham Town, and I'm just waiting for her to report back. Just got word through from Chris on the radio that it's worth going through the next pair of bridges and uh, there are some moorings available so uh, we're going to move down, she's going to wait for me and uh, see how we get on. come through Dunham Town and we found a lovely little mooring spot just before you start heading into Sale. It's right out in the country looking absolutely gorgeous and now it's time for lunch. Well, good morning everybody. We've had a super night on the mooring last night, on our own, in the middle of nowhere. Not even a fox barking disturbed us last night. Cracking night, it really was. Uh, today we're starting cruising again. As you can see, a little bit more cloud about this morning and it is a little bit cooler. Um, but today we're hoping to cruise through Sale and Altrincham uh, and then on to Worsley which is the birthplace of canals. Uh, for those of you who are abroad and don't know about too much about canals, Worsley was the start of the canal network. It was one of the first canals to be built. And when we get there, I'll explain a little bit more. But in the meantime, if you've got your tea and your coffee ready, uh, come and join us on today's cruise. This imposing looking building is the site of the Lino type works where all the printing used to be done in this area. Huge printing machines used to labour away inside that building. And then the computer age arrived and Microsoft Word and other applications surpassed this building and now it lays derelict. Soon I would imagine either to be redeveloped or knocked down, which would be such a shame. But now it's surrounded by all new apartments. Looks out of place in its surroundings, yet it was here before they were. And the Lino works are now being replaced by these buildings, designed to look and mimic a ship. A lot of those old, lovely Victorian buildings have been bulldozed for these. I'll leave it up to you to decide which is the better building. I know which I prefer. This very long straight stretch of canal that we're cruising through now is the town of Sale, which borders Altrincham, but Sale is the larger town. Now, Sale owns, owes its existence to the railways. Because when Brindley built the canal back in the 18th century, in 1850, the only thing that was around here was a rifle range for the uh, army to practice on. But it wasn't until the advent of the trains bringing commuters to the city of a thousand souls, or a village, that it grew to a population of over a thousand. It was a green thing, was in the middle of the canal, it's a rower. <laughs> and as Chris quite rightly points out, there is a rower up ahead. So I'm gonna have to put the camera down and just give him a little toot to warn him that I'm here. Because rowers row backwards, they can't see where they're going. So, once we get past him, I'll uh, come back to you. Past the rower now, and uh, the little boat he was in is known as a skull. And he complimented me on the fact that I, under I knew that 
but it's only because of in our sailing days, part of our sailing club, excuse the train, part of our sailing club had a rowing section and they rowed skulls, so that's how I knew. Now you'll notice that this canal is very long and straight and of course the rowers love it. Excuse the train again, obviously a busy line. So they use this as a straight mile uh, and because it's nice and straight they can do time trials along here uh, and qualify for some of the regional and national events. So it's quite popular with the rowers. Fortunately today we've only met the one so we're quite lucky. We've now gone down the full length of the sail straight, as they call it. We've probably taken about five times longer than a rowing boat would, but there you go. Actually quite nice here, and uh, we've just passed a very nice young lady on top of a boat with virtually a very skimpy swimming costume, let's call it. Uh, thought she was going to jump in and have a swim, but it turns out she was a model on a photo shoot, <laughs> and we photobombed it. <laughs> Well, clearly they got the bare necessities in that place. <laughs> what a bear. That was loud. Find all the pigeons away. Round to the left we go. We don't want to go up that way. We're staying going. That was a turn up. We just turn left at Waters Meeting, that's the junction just under the bridge. To one way is the direction we came from, which if it's reversed it'd be your right. Uh, if you carried on left, that would take you down into Wigan and the Cheshire Ring. But because we're going to Liverpool, we didn't want to go that way, so we've now turned left at Waters Meeting and are now heading towards Liverpool. Such a shame because in the boating world, Walter's Meeting is quite a famous place. But when you actually get to it, there isn't really a lot here. It's, uh, and it's very disconcerting as well because you make the turn and you're actually wondering, am I really going in the right direction? But we'll know for sure because a little bit further down there is a huge Kellogg's factory. And I know we passed that last time, but Chris is a good navigator. She's got a book up front and she's oh, going under a bridge. She's absolutely convinced we're in the right direction. So I, who am I to argue? You don't argue with the boss. Well, clearly we are in going in the right direction because this is the impressive Kellogg's factory. And if you could have smelly vision, you could smell the cornflakes on here. This is the old loading bay where the working boats used to come and load and unload. Uh, we're passing through now. Well, the weather's started to close in now. As you can see, the sky's a little bit yip. Uh, we've had a few spots of rain, hence why I've put my wet gear on. Uh, although it's stopped now, uh, but it has turned considerably colder compared to this morning. Um, and we've obviously passed a large bakery because the smell is absolutely divine. It smelt of cakes and fresh bread. Oh, I could have stopped there all day and just inhaled it all. It was lovely. But still, we're carrying on. Um, <laughs> the reason I got confused at uh, Walter's meeting was because I was looking at the wrong section of the book. 
I was looking at the section that goes down towards Manchester, thinking we were going along that, and in fact we weren't. So, my fault. Thank God we got a good navigator in Chris on board. And uh, to be fair to Chris, she has this inbuilt compass. Her navigation skills, even without a map, are second to none. So, I'm glad I've got her on board, must admit. Otherwise, I could have been off, I don't know, Timbuktu. And we're just about to cross over another marvel of engineering, the Barton Aqueduct. Um, it was, and probably still is, one of the seven wonders of the waterways world. And when Brindley first built this canal, this was a fixed aqueduct. It passes over the Manchester Ship Canal, and with the increased amount of traffic coming up and down, and larger ships being built, in 19, 1894, the aqueduct was replaced with this impressive swing bridge, which is still operated today. Fortunately, not at the moment, because we're just about to go over it. But it is swung, and there is shipping still coming up and down. And there you can see the Barton Road Bridge and the impressive control tower of the swing bridge itself. Um, Sadly, these days you could do with a bit of painting this bridge, but uh, the view across the, the ship canal is quite impressive. And I believe the main road in the distance that you can see there is the Thurwell Aqueduct, which is the busy M6 or M60. And quite impressive. Just think how they built these sort of things all those years ago because they didn't have impressive machinery like we have today. Quite something really when you think about it. And I know for a fact Chris is uh, filming on the other side. Uh, so there's two bridges here. The Barton Road Bridge actually swings as well as the bridge that we're on, or the Barton Aqueduct. Quite amazing, really. Still in use today. past the lighthouse, gone under a road bridge, Monton Green Road Bridge. We're back out in the countryside all of a sudden. There's still urbanisation around us, but the countryside. Now coming into the outskirts of Worsley, Obviously on the outer reaches of the village, the new developments have gone up. These were here last time we came through. 
uh, and the older village is further down. All very nice. one of the smallest boats I've seen on this stretch of the canal and now we're just passing Worsley dry docks some of the oldest dry docks in the country well that's it it's cruising is all done for today we've moored up it's lunchtime we're gonna have a bite of lunch this is the birthplace, as it were, of the UK Canal Network. And I'll be posting another vlog just about this, because I think it's a special situation. So, hope you've enjoyed the cruise. And uh, if you want to do the usual. Yeah, subscribe. Press the subscribe button. And the bell icon. And I forgot one. Yeah, the notification. <laughs> and of course, give us a thumbs up. If you like the video. See, I haven't uh, got this luck. She hasn't got it yet. She, we'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, folks, that's it for today. And uh, we'll see you next time on Life on Board Amy Joe. Stay safe now. Bye. Bye.